Cari amici sportivi, welcome to a special edition of Milan Weekly Podcast. Midweek edition, lunchtime edition. Uh, everybody knows Steve, he loves lunch. You know, everybody is either finished their lunch or starting their lunch. So we try to bring out some content for you guys, uh, you know, uh, for you to enjoy during your lunchtime. And, you know, uh, digest your beautiful panina, have a little espressino. And uh, continue on your day in the in, in the workforce, uh, guys. Uh, you know my passion for soccer is uh, both uh, you know both European soccer and uh, local soccer in the country where we're from, Canada. So uh, I have a I have a great honor again to have uh, to have as a guest Mr. Sandro Grande from the Montreal Manic Football Club. Uh, Sandro, welcome. Thank you, Steve. How's it going? Very good. And yourself? Yeah, not bad, not bad. Thank you for the invite. Always a pleasure to be here. Now, guys, uh, of course, you must be seeing the screen and you see Sandro with a humongous grin on his face. He's wearing, of course, <laughs> Juventus jersey uh, on the Milan Weekly podcast. Uh, Sandro has been on the show before, guys. Uh, a lot of experience, uh, both as a player and as a coach and as a, as a football enthusiast, guys. Uh, someone who, who wants to give back to the game. Uh, Sandro, I, we know that uh, myself, I follow you dearly. And uh, I know I always want to make sure that I keep up to date with what, what's going on with you. Uh, because of the, the respect that I have for what you do for Canadian soccer. So I wanted to give you this platform as you there was a lot of changes for you and uh, I want you just to give everybody uh, a little insight on those changes. Look, I mean um, you know uh, I was at it was less for for many years. You know, I'm very grateful to the to the club, you know, to the people there that gave me the opportunity to uh, to start working and coaching. Uh, you know, it's the, it was an honor to to, to represent them to to build a program for them and, and all their uh, all their players and and uh, you know all the people behind the scenes, the volunteers that helped out was you know it was just I couldn't ask for a better a better place to start my career and uh, you know after ten years you know I know a lot of people are not used to change or whatever but I'm the type of guy that uh, you know I've, I've traveled many clubs I've traveled many countries uh, you know I'm I'm a professional of the game I'm not. That's what I find myself. I don't. I don't find myself just a, um, you know, an employee of the club, or one club. You know, so I want to give back to as many kids as as I can give back to. And um, you know, I, I decided to move on. Um, you know, I mean, my contract was 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 done anyway. So I decided to move on, and I'm uh, I signed with Montreal Manic Academy. Um, Basically, the Montreal Manic is the Montreal Manic that we all know from the 1980s uh, and the NASL, the old NASL. Um, and basically, uh, there's a person named Gary Gall who bought the rights and the name to, to the club. And uh, he decided to launch an academy uh, about a year ago. And, uh, and that's it. You know, like they have a, a very uh, ambitious uh, setup, uh, ambitious objectives. And um, I decided, you know what? I think it's time to make a move. And uh, and, and, and that's go. and that and you know, from from talking just a couple of times and getting your personality off uh, off social media, that looks like it seems like it's right up your alley. Something that's very ambitious and uh, and going in uh, and you know, putting yourself. Sometimes we don't like to put ourselves in uncomfortable situations because we're comfortable where we are. So for you to make that move, you know, I tip my hat. It's not easy. Uh, it's not like we're uh, we're spring chickens, right, Sandro? Uh, we're not uh, 18 or uh, or 19 years old where we don't have uh, responsibilities. So to make a switch like that that you did, especially in a niche world that you live in, let's be very honest with you, it's very niche, uh, especially, you know, soccer in, in Canada always takes that second fiddle to hockey. It's not the easiest thing to make a switch like that. So I, I want to just say, you know, I tip my hat to you, uh, Man to man, that was a courageous move, and I wish you the best of luck uh, in this Look, new uh, adventure. I, I, I've always, uh, when I left to Italy, I was 18. My dad, my dad, like, you know, not just anybody, my dad. 
and my mom as well, a little bit less, but more my dad was very, very straightforward and told me straight, are you sure you want to go to Italy? To do what? You know how many players of your caliber are in Italy? Um, you can go to the US, you can go to NCAA, and you'll probably have, you know, a good four or five years of university, whatever it is, three, four years. And, and then and then you'll be, you know, maybe come back home and play with the impact. And I said, listen, I, I need to try this. I was very ambitious. I'm yeah. always very ambitious. I, I, I need to... I need to push myself. I don't. I don't want to stay at comfort. I do like comfort, but the reality is, is that um, once we get comfortable, we stop working at 100%. Yeah, and exactly. if we stop working at 100% in soccer. You know, going to work every day and nine to five um, is, is is very cool. Uh, you know, you, you have your routine, you have your, your your stuff, you have your lifestyle. The reality is in soccer is if I take a break for two three years, well, Canada soccer has lost two, three generations of players. And I have too much pride, too much um, love for for soccer to 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 let that happen. And on, and on that note, hold on, just give me a second, okay? <laughs> this guy. We're waiting. It's a, there might be a wardrobe change, guys. There we go. There you go. Wardrobe change. Go. So Canadian national team player, guys, right here. I, I did it. I did it. I did it just to bug you a little bit. New Jersey. Now we're gonna get to uh, to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> and it and it's great that you put on that that jersey that represents our country. And you know, you played for for Canada. So I wanted to ask you that with it with it while the list, if we just go back a bit, you know, um, the development process that it while the list you know, took the kids that they, they successfully developed and, you know, they went on. Can you explain to everybody, you know, like, I, I unfortunately, like, I'm not in, in that, so I don't know the feeling. But for you, it's almost like a father figure feeling where you see these kids develop and get better and get better and get better and then make that kind of jump that you made. How do you feel as someone who went through this process already? Look, I mean, uh, the people that helped me out when I left, uh when i left canada or the people that helped me out when i was young i still admire them and i still speak to them today and i still see them a few times a year uh because i think it's important to to remember who helped you during your path um and i will always be grateful to those people for giving me the passion for giving me the, the opportunity you know to love this game and for me you know i mean in the past couple of years you know, um, I'm coaching at Montmorency, and in the stands, there's Harry Fayao, uh, who's just been loaned uh, to the CPL from from uh, from CF Montreal. Um, and he doesn't just leave the stadium at the end of the game. I don't know he's at the stadium. I don't know he's there watching the game of Montmorency. And he waits for me till the end to come and shake my hand and say hi to me. Um, he could have easily just left at the final whistle or at halftime or whatever. And those types of things, I think, are the things that, that really make a difference in, in, uh, in, in, my, in my perspective, in a coach's perspective, you know? Um, yeah. You know, we had Matthew Caravolo who played at the World Cup. I mean, I said this uh, on, another, um, on another platform the other day. I said, Matthew Caravolo, when he played against Brazil in the first game of the World Cup, U-17, uh, about 18 months ago, um, our whole Montmorency team, there was a game on the field. We had a game that day, Montmorency. We weren't supposed to be in the dressing room just yet. It wasn't our time yet. We had another half an hour. Our whole team was in the stands with their cell phones watching Canada play Brazil and cheering on Canada. And, and, you know, there's a good chunk of the, of the team at Mamasi that played at Etoile de l'Est, so had the opportunity to, to, to train with Matthew Caravolo. And, and they were all saying the same thing. Oh, there's Matthew, there's Matthew. Oh, uh, yeah, oh this guy, uh, when he used to train with us at Etoile de l'Est, he was two years younger or three years younger. And, he, and already there you can see like he was, he was putting the ball through our legs and going around us. And, and, and just listening to that was like, I wish all the parents that, you know, we're disappointed that we lost a Magic Carvalho or in, in one of our teams, or or we lost a Sam Salter that went to the Impact, or or um, Edouard Traoré that went to France 
uh, halfway through the season uh, when it was our national championship year, you know, and they were all disappointed. I wasn't disappointed. I was very, very happy for those guys. And I'll forever be happy for those guys because in the end, they're doing what maybe they were put on the surf to do. And yeah. somewhere along the line, guys like myself or whoever had a chance to work with them or, you know, even the volunteers, even the president, even the CA members that that supported that message, um, they should be proud as well. Yeah, and, and you know, it, it's a bond that you guys create that uh, I don't think can ever be broken. And, you know, the younger generation or kids that trained with all these guys that you've developed and, you know, it's someone else to look up to and a goal to attain for them, you know, and it should not be negative. And this is important for the parents out there. Guys, I understand that football, soccer is a team sport, but in the end, each kid has their own dream and will take that different path to their dream. It should not be looked at as a negative. It should be looked at as a positive and someone else that we could look to for that. So that's amazing, an amazing experience that you share. You know, I, and I ask myself, I, I often compare soccer to school. Why is it okay that in school they get to secondary one and my daughter goes one way and another daughter goes another way, another boy goes another way, and but yet they spend six years together and they weren't always in the same class from grade one to grade six. The classroom changes, right? And now they go to high school and now there's new friends and, and one guy's going to the west of uh, the island, another guy's going to the east of the island, and then they go to CJEP and I'm going into medicine because i'm a 95 average student and you're going into maybe something a little bit uh, uh, easier a different route uh, just a different route not even easier but, just a that's different fine. Route. does anybody get jealous you know do, do people say oh i can't believe that guy got into medicine and my son didn't you know like they hard they, they don't do it as much in, in education you know but here with soccer or hockey there's there's so much of that you know and you know it, it just it, it hurts it hurts sometimes to hear people talk like that you know yeah honestly i have always took it as something like it's a bit disrespectful to the coach because the coach his 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 goal is yes the team but it's also developing these players not only on the field but also as a human being going forward right like what kind of type of attitude or discipline will he have from this experience that he has with sandro grande or steve polillo or, or anybody else, they cross paths uh, on their soccer journey, right? So uh, I've always thought about it, you know, and I, in, in a, I coach my son, Gianfranco. Uh, you know, he's very, he's very young. He's someone who just loves to go on the pitch. Do, do I know if he wants to continue playing soccer? To be very honest, you guys, I don't know. I'm sometimes more passionate than him. And I imagine he's only, he's only seven years old, right? So, uh, but if I'm coaching these seven-year-olds, and I'm trying to at least pass on some of the soccer knowledge, some of the soccer knowledge that I was able to retain from, you know, talking to people like you, talking to uh, friends of mine that have played in the national level. You know, I have uh, Francis Colo Giacomo, a good friend of mine. He's an interist. He's a snake. But, you know, <laughs> he did that. He did. He had his own experience going to, you know, going to the United States, going to a, a college to play some football. And so and that's great experience for, for me to retain. And I try to pass that on to my son and the kids there. And sometimes, you know, the parents, you know, at seven years old, they're like, you know, we're losing this game. And I look at the parents, they're like, guys, they're seven years old. I was like, I'm not counting goals here, guys. What I'm trying to do is if my players can put four or five passes together and score one goal, I don't care if the other team scores 100 goals. I've accomplished what I needed to do on that device. So I, I, I really feel for you guys in that, you know, and especially as you get older with the kids, it becomes like almost the parents want to live their dream through their kids. And that's the wrong, that's the wrong thing to do because you as a parent had a path. I had my path. You had a path. Your kids is, it's their path. Make them, make them uh, go and learn and make mistakes and learn from those mistakes on their own path, right? So amazing yeah, stuff from you, Sandro. Yeah, thanks. Uh, you know, parent, parent, when we're parents, um, you know, obviously we're passionate, we're, we're, we love our kids and all that stuff, you know, but, you know, 
nobody expects a kid going from daycare to kindergarten and all of a sudden all of a sudden he knows algebra yeah it, it just doesn't doesn't make sense or he knows how to read shakespeare it, like it doesn't it's not realistic so but yet they're asking you to win games at seven years old yeah you know and you're trying to help the kids learn the game proper way so learn how to read properly don't skip nine words in a sentence and read one word every time right because that's not reading you, you need to read word by word understand what you're reading and by the end of the book you're going to have read a book that you understand the message behind it. and we can't do no, that in soccer no can't do we that cannot soccer. skip chapter we can't skip chapters here no i had a question for you and uh just because i know you're a father and you know i i see uh, i see your social media accounts with your son i don't know if you do but do you find it difficult to coach your son or if you do at one point coach your son would you find it difficult so um as technical director for many years i've told parents leave your kid alone leave your kid alone leave your kid alone, leave your kid alone. and then all of a sudden my daughter comes along and all of a sudden my my, uh, my son comes along um one thing i stress to them all the time and this there's no there's no negotiating you got to work at a thousand percent you know, I used to go watch my daughter. She does. She she was well, she is a competitive gymnast, um, and I would go watch her. And and then gymnastics, you're not allowed to be like right next to the. You know, you're not allowed to be downstairs with the kids. You know, you need to be, you need to be um, on top in the stands. You know, and obviously there's nobody yelling and screaming, and but you can see when they're training and they're training properly. You know, and um, and just the look. You know, I just give her a look and I'm like, hey, pay attention, focus, do what you need to do. You know, uh, my son is the same thing, is the same thing. Like, I, if anything, I, I'm asking him to dribble more, make mistakes, lose the ball in front of your net. I don't care. Just try, just make sure you give an effort, you know. And last time was pretty challenging because he was going through a, uh, a growth spurt. And his body was all off. I mean, what you see now, if you've seen any of the videos now, that's like it's black and white compared to last year. And now it was my son all of a sudden. And obviously in the sport that I truly love, it was it was starting to get to me. I'll, I'll be honest, yeah. it was starting to get to me. <laughs> yeah. And um, but I would when I go to games, uh, people could tell you with the like most of the young teams, I'll sit in, in the grass, on the grass somewhere. And sometimes parents will come up to me every it happened a few times. Now I think they know not to come and ask me. Like, why, why don't you why aren't you getting up and going incorrect? What do I need to go correct? No. They're nine years old. Let them have fun. Let them let them let, let them lose so they realize what it means to lose. You know? If a kid, if your son tomorrow morning dribbles in front of the net, do you really need to tell him, hey, why did you dribble in front of the net? When the other team scores, he knows. He knows he made a mistake. Next time, I won't do that. Or next time, I'm going to find another solution. Right? So why, you know, like, uh, uh, I, I did a, I'm, I'm doing a Barcelona course. And and they, one of the things that they say is that if we want to have independent soccer players, footballers, um, we have to be more quiet when we're coaching. So the players are not dependent on us. And if they're dependent on us, their stress level goes higher because they're always going to look to us uh, to us for a solution. Yeah. And they can't do that. They need to find solutions on their own as a human being, as a soccer player, as as a student, whatever. You know? And, um, you know, uh, w one of the other things that they say is, um, okay, I lost my train of thought there, but, <laughs> anyway, like it's it's yeah, I, I love that idea. But um, oh no, no it, this is what it. Okay, so basically their message is: listen, I want to go from point A to point B. Okay, I want to get from one net to the other net. I'm right-footed. I'm going to use my right foot. You're left-footed. You're going to use your left foot. Uh, player number three, he's both feet. He's going to use both feet. We both get to the end result. Who's right? Who's wrong? Nobody. Nobody. 
I'm sure you have a way of doing mathematics and you're pretty <laughs> quick at doing it. So, so these things are, it's important that people understand that. Like your son is not my son. Your son exactly. is going to see things in a different viewpoint. I'm not my son. My son is not going to be me. He's going to be a totally different player. Exactly. Yeah. You know, like, so. It's, and it's um, also to it's also to develop something that you know we overlook. We we look a lot at physical talent, we look at a lot at tactical talent, but we forget that there's a logic to the sport. It's like it, like there's logic in life. There's a logic to the sport. Of you know? course. And, and, and it, it, like you said, of course, I, I'll raise my hand. I'm guilty to this too. You know, I see things sometimes, and I like uh, I try to correct. But in the end, you're 100 percent right. You need to make them make that mistake so that they can adjust their soccer logic and not have that mistake happen again when they're on the pitch. So I, I want to go. Ajax is so one sorry. of the biggest. Sorry, uh, quick. Ajax is. I think you. We lost the mute. Hello. Yeah, I hear you now. Yeah, sorry. So Ajax is one of the best clubs in the history of developing soccer players. Uh, their, their young players, one session a week is in the parking lot. In the parking lot, they remove the parking lot. They made a little soccer field with boards. One session a week, the coach takes his lawn chair, sits next to this little field, watches the kids play street <laughs> soccer. My God. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, you have to open up your mind, like you said, to like other ways of doing things that were maybe not conventional or not we're not used to. And these guys here make a living out of it. Uh, I want to go to Manic, the Manic Football Club, because I'll be very honest. We talked before. I'm not ashamed to say it. I'll be very honest. I didn't know the Manic Football Club here. And I live in Montreal. Can you tell us a little bit about their uh, a little bit a bit a little bit about their story? And you know, I, I see that they have a connection to Rangers. Uh, give us a little uh, insight on the Manic Football Club, and I can share the website here, and uh, and we can have that uh, that conversation. Yeah, I mean, uh, look, Manic, um, they they're opening up their academy. Their goal is to have a professional team, so it's going to be a professional academy uh, soon. Uh, as soon as as soon as the the, the uh, everything lined up, all the stars line up, you know, um, the academy goes from U5 all the way to U19 for now, and um, and they're working on what's next, the next step. Uh, their objective is basically train kids in the best environment possible, hire the best staff possible, or the most experienced staff, and really develop players to place players around the world. So you said there's a Rangers partnership. Well, Glasgow Rangers is not a paid partnership. People might think, oh yeah, they're just paying, we're gonna get the Rangers jerseys. No, there's no there's no Rangers jerseys. There's no Rangers cards or anything that's gonna be sold. What's happening here is that there's a partnership. The partnership involves our staff uh, uh, exchanging with them on methodology, on, um, on philosophy of play, uh, on on coaching education, okay. Um, the other thing that this partnership brings is a place where our players, if they are performant enough, can join Rangers Academy one day or Rangers Football Club. Well, now all of a sudden we have a pathway for this player. Okay. Now here's the key. The key is that Range uh, Manic Academy is not going to be partnering up only with. Glasgow Rangers. So there are other partnerships coming along. Um, I can't exactly say which ones because uh, we, they, you know. we would we would never make you go down that route. But just yeah. the idea of the academy, because a big question here, Sandro, and I'll, and I'll be straightforward with you. Yeah. Let's say I would be a parent. You understand? Like, what what am I getting at the Manic Academy that I can't get from my local football club? And you, so you know, and you said it. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. The TD, the technical director of this club, he's French from France. He worked 10 years with Lyon, Olympique de Lyonnais. Olympique de Lyonnais, along with Ajax and along with some of the other big clubs, are some of the most, like, most talented in developing players. Okay? So now we have a guy that worked at that type of level with tons of connections, tons of uh, friends uh, that side of the pond. Um, 
which is just going to open up more doors for the kids. Okay. Um, he's obviously a UEFA pro license coach. Uh, you have uh, some of the other coaches that we've, you know, we just uh, announced uh, a coach from, uh, from Greece. Uh, um, he has a UEFA license. There's going to be more staff that's coming on board with, you know, UEFA licenses or, or, um, B licenses, Canadian B licenses, or Canadian A licenses. So it's normal if if um, if your kids are being taught by, you know, mommy and daddy that never played the game, or or even if they've played the game but like you know they don't have the, you know they're not professionals. They're not professional mm -hmm. coaches. They they don't have the time to go and follow the federation courses. They don't have the time to. You know, they work nine to five, like, where are they going to do this? Some of the courses at the Federation or at the CSA level are uh, four-day courses, five-day courses. You know, yeah. not everybody can do that. Exactly. And let's be clear here, guys. Nothing against the, the parents who volunteer and who no. coach for their local clubs. It's just, no. you know, I, I, I'm going to need to get my car fixed. I'm going to go to a proper mechanic, right? And then exactly. It, it's, a stu it's a real East End uh, East End. Uh, methodology or it's an east end uh slang saying but the, in the end it's true right because uh at the academy from what from what you're saying you're basically uh, me as a parent i am going to bring my son and i'm going to pay for the service that i'm going to be get by manic uh, by the manic uh, football club academy it's going to be uh at the mechanic level right i need my son to i need my i want my son and i'm willing to pay for the, the services that you guys give from actual mechanics. So. Yeah, of course. So there's another catch. You said pain. So right now, the Manic Academy for this summer, because of the COVID situation, we don't know how many weeks. Like it's, it's, you know, everything is up in the air. Uh, we're definitely going to have a season. That's for sure. We're definitely going to be training. We're definitely going to be playing games, you know, but uh, we're not sure exactly. Like if we plan on, on, on a normal year, we say we're going to work 40 weeks a year. But now because of COVID, it might be 35. So, you know, these are little variables that we need to work with this year. So the U5 to U12, there's going to be a payment. U15, uh, sorry, U5 to U13, there's going to be a payment. U15 and up, there's going to be a payment for the summer. But as of November, as of November, when we do our tryouts for the academy, the high performance academy, which is U15 to, to U19, uh, whoever's going to be selected there is going to be playing for free. That's uh, and the, that's, and the that's, reason for that's, that, you know, and the reason for that, Steve, is because Gary uh, is investing money. Uh, Gary knows what goes on at Ajax and knows what goes on at Benfica. Um, and he says, why can't we start doing this in Canada? You know, it, it just, you know, it was the less in the last 10 years has placed, you know, we were able to develop 20 players, around 20 players that are playing at the next level. But yep. it well the nest never got a never got a penny for that. And mm -hmm. and and it's unfortunate because it well the rest needs or any other club for that matter. Like I'm just any club, any club, exactly. Any club, yeah. They need that extra revenue to run their programs, to hire more staff, you know. And um and they're gonna get, you know, th this opportunity at the Manic is gonna be a professional academy and and by having a free U fifteen to U nineteen with regards to FIFA laws, well, any player that moves on from the Manic Academy, it, Manic Academy is going to get rewarded for it, you know, and Just for the, we're, and, and which is rightfully fantastic so. for the kids because if we're partnering up with all these clubs, a third division club in Germany might be coming, a, 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 a club in Austria, a club in, uh, in Scotland, uh, one, in, one in France, one in, um, one in England, they're, they're all coming. And what's going to happen is that okay, your son is a phenom. Well, which one? Which one of our academies is the best one? Let's say it's Rangers. Yeah. Okay, they go to Rangers. Yeah. You know, and not only that. Son, and, yeah, go. yeah, and not only that. It's you know, it, it's it, it's rightfully so. The the academies, the clubs, should be rewarded for this. You know, there's there's time invested by, uh, you know, again, time invested, whether it be uh, benevol or paid or however they do it at club level. That's, you know, like, like you said, 20, 20 players, whether their outcome is they continue and they're professional or it stops somewhere, 
there should be there i agree with you 100% there should be something coming back right and and that's not always the case and i did not know that about the manic uh, manic academy and that's that's phenomenal yeah. uh it's great to hear finally that you know we're taking the advice from people that like you said know what's going on on befica know what's going on on ix which guys i'm going to say it it's, it's, this is going to be maybe shock news to you Ajax, which is the Netherlands, and Benfica, which is Portugal, know a shit ton of more about soccer or football than we do. Let's face it. That's that's the reality. So when I said before, you know, Messi comes out of Argentina, well, Canada hasn't produced a Messi. So no. Argentina must be doing something better than us. Or Pele exactly. coming out of Brazil. Like, like we need to be honest with ourselves. Like... Uh, you know, if we if we were a top ten country in and out of top ten, you know, then maybe you and I can discuss. But yeah. when you're seventieth and eightieth and ninetieth constantly, well, there's something that's not happening there. Yeah. I wanted to ask you a question. Is this is this my, my personal uh, intrigue about this? You know, so like the way for licenses. Uh, Canada B courses, uh, Canada A courses, whatever coaching level courses you take. Let's say someone, I'm going to call him Mr. X, comes from one of these very powerful countries that play soccer. And he doesn't let, we're not going to go UEFA because I would imagine UEFA is across the board. He can be from Montreal. He can be from uh, Spezzano Piccolo Cosenza in Italy. That UEFA license has been granted to him. I would assume it's across the board. But let's say let's say local soccer, okay? We'll go to I don't know example, and I'll give you, I'll give you Iceland for an example. This this person is coming from Iceland, and he has an A grade license from Iceland. Even Iceland is is has done something better than Canada has done. Would the Canadian Soccer Federation recognize that license or no? Um. It's I'm just interesting. Sure. If you can I'm answer not, it, if yeah, you can I'm, answer it, I'm not it, sure 100. Uh, if they, I know that they won't recognize it fully. Uh, they'll probably give you um, uh, like an equivalence, but a, okay. a, maybe a lower grade. So if you mm -hmm. come here with a UEFA A license, you're not automatically going to get a CSA li li a license. But they might give you something. Um, and uh, I mean, we, we need to be we need to be honest. Like um, Canada is different than where this person came from yeah you know so so he also needs to see more or less the reality here so him coming here and saying i'm a i'm a this coach i uh I, i'm not going to do your courses is also not fair to canada soccer because the kids in canada are totally different than the kids in cosenza True. True. you know no and the only reason why i ask is is i wanted to know if we're as a country we're doing us uh, we're doing ourselves a little bit of a disservice when people do come from a, a powerful soccer nation and we're telling them no uh, your license is not good you need to take this course right like uh, and it was just a question I, i have no i don't it can go either way and i understand i, I, I don't your think point i don't think it's not it's not they'll, they'll never tell you it's not a good license and no the uf license is not a good license but they won't say they won't they it, that's not the message that they're giving they're just like can you assimilate to what we do because it might be a little bit different you know okay. nobody in europe i can guarantee you 100 that nobody in europe has ever worked in a club that has 2,000 players Interesting. Clubs in Europe have 150, 200 kids. In Italy, a school like Alcio is 140 kids, 150 kids. And that's people that just because they have to make the team, or because they dis or they just don't have enough subscriptions. No, because, to... because it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist that you that you have to have like every little um, area has their own club. You know, Laval has 400,000 uh, population. Um, there, there used to be six clubs. There's going to be only two uh, soon. Um, but six clubs still had about 2,000 players each or 3,000 players each. There were about 14,000 wow. players, you know. How can how can Sandro see 2,000 players at a no, impossible. It is impossible. So now we're not giving the, the best service to all of them. You know, we're giving the best 
the best service to who we could see. And we're hoping that, you know, like you said before, that's why we need parent coaches. You, you said it before. We need parent coaches. We we do. We need benevolent parent coaches. We need parent coaches that are, you know, that are passionate about the game, that have played the game, that want to learn. We we need them. We need them because there's just way too much players in a soccer club for you to be able to, you know, the, the ratios are one to one to twelve players. Exactly. One to and, 10 to over, players. <laughs> and to oversee all that is is just physically impossible right so it's impossible and oversee that properly we can oversee but overseeing it properly and at the level that you guys want to do it it's 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 impossible i yeah. wanted uh, again another another question for you sandra you had mentioned you know the the manic football club would like to start playing games who where do the manic football uh, club games take place like are they playing against other clubs or they're playing against other academies how does that work they're definitely going to be playing against uh, other academies from Ontario, and they are going to play against clubs uh, from Ontario and and from Quebec. Okay. Um, you know, obviously, the, the clubs need to need to uh, need to be okay with that, and and you know there shouldn't be an issue. So, and they're also going to play against some academies in the northeast uh, part of of US. Um, so we're forming some uh, some little. Uh, I don't want to say partnerships, but uh, like friendships. Almost like a yeah, friendships with other with other academies. Yeah. So there's, uh, for example, Black Rock Academy. That's in, uh, I think it's in New York. Or um, they're 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 definitely going to be one of the uh, the academies that we're, we're probably going to play against. You know, and when you go and play against you know Black Rocks or, or you know academies like that in the U.S., well now all of a sudden you've opened up the doors not only to Rangers Academy in Europe. NCAA, <laughs> NCAA, you know, NCAA, and um, you know, th these are all again. Everything in the end comes back to the soccer player, the boy, the girl that wants to play soccer, that wants a pathway to elite soccer. Man is going to be the place to go. Excellent. I'm going to not respectfully move away from Manic because I want to give you uh, a platform to talk about what you're doing too with uh, Sandro Grande Academy. Tell people what uh, what the Sandro Grande Academy is all about. Look, I mean, um, you know, it's, it's many years I've been in, in, in game and, and I never took the time to um, to coach more kids. You know, and it's not that I didn't really take the time. It's also the fact that I was working for it one less full time. It took up a lot of my time. You know, I also have a family. My son and my daughter do sports, so I always wanted to follow them as well. Um, so basically, I said to myself, you know what? Now that I have the time, I'm going to open up my own thing. And my own thing is not Manic Academy. I'm not going against Manic or anything else because there's people that have asked me that. It's basically private training and small group training, you know. And now because I'm doing it on my own, under my own name, now kids from uh, all over the island don't need to be afraid to send me a text message on on uh, on Instagram to get coached. Because before they wouldn't do that, and I can tell you that they didn't do that before, because now my phone is off the hook since I since I since I announced. <laughs> you know, like yeah. Um, it was you know, kind of like you were you were branded l'étoile de l'est and no yeah. one would reach out to you for any exactly. and you know and again yeah. that's a bit of our culture too uh, we, we we kind of put ourselves in silos and are afraid to exchange information uh, exactly. which i think a lot of local clubs should almost do on either uh, a quarterly basis i think they, they should all get together and talk about what they're doing and it's not yeah. like hey you're going to get this level of canadian certification and this it's really guys you know what's happening at your club like, hey, yep. CSRDP, what's ha what happened during COVID? You know, and uh, Rocco Placentino from uh, Ville Saint Laurent can say, hey, guys, during COVID, I did X, Y, Z. CSRDP could say, hey, that's great. It, you know, imitation and copying is probably the greatest form of flattery that anybody could have. So uh, yeah. I don't know if they do it. I'm talking now here just hypothetically. I would be surprised if they do, but... If I would be, if I would have a decision-making power at club level, I would force them together to talk about this. Because, I, like you said, there we should be no kid, yeah, there should we be don't. no you kid know, like, uh, who should be scared to. And I'm not saying even you uh, at the, the, the TD level, right? There is a there is a chain of command, but 
they should not be scared to talk to you or ask you a question just because they're from another club. So, yeah. So, you know, my, my private academy is going to be based on individual training, small group training, you know, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm always going to come back to the same thing. This is what I'm all about. I'm all about helping as many kids as possible develop. And if there's a boy that's playing or a girl that's playing in, in uh, Longa or Lakeshore or wherever in RDP, you know, and they never had a chance to, for me to, to help them out or transmit my passage and my, my passion, um, well, now I'm going to have that opportunity. I'm going to have the opportunity to touch as, you know, to, to be in contact with as many kids on the field uh, in a passionate environment. And now they can, they can, you know, if I give them just one message that helps them out and then they go see Rocco and they get another message from Rocco and that helps them out. And Patrice Bernier tells them something else uh, because he goes and do motivational speeches at their school. I don't know. You know, all these little things and leave those three soccer people uh, um, in, in, that, in that equation. Anthony Calvillo goes to their, 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 their elementary school and talks to them. And he gives them one, one message. We're all helping the kids. Exactly. And if we help the kids, the reality is, is that we're also helping Canada. And yeah. I'm fed up. I don't know about you. I'm fed up. You know, unfortunately, we didn't qualify when I was qualifying for the World Cup. We didn't. We missed out on the, on the World Cup. You know, I'm, I'm disappointed that we did qualify, but we haven't qualified since 1986. I want to watch Canada. I want to watch Alfonso Davies. I want Alfonso Davies to explode even more than he has already. I want the kids from, from our national team, because there's a lot of young kids coming up, to really get to the next level, to bring our nation to the next level. Because even if I didn't succeed as a player to get our nation to the World Cup, um, I'll, I'll always be able to say, I'm a national team player and my next generation, my predecessors or whatever they are, you know, they, they got to the next level and I'm proud of them. I'm part of them. You know, like, well, I can say, I can say I'm proud to, to, to have the chance to talk to you. That's for sure. Because I think you are uh, yourself and the teams that have gone through this journey ha are a stepping stone to, to future generations making this jump from you know not qualifying to qualifying because that's the jump we're not we're not gonna we're not gonna lie to ourselves and say hey uh, guys uh, uh, you know we want to improve on our fifa ranking no the jump is from not qualifying to the world cup to canada qualifying to the world cup not being a host or a third host you know like qualifying that that's the, that's what i want to that's what i want to uh, i want to see right so you know sandro For your academy, if you can let people know uh, from what age to what age. And I know that the first session of your academy, correct me if I'm wrong, is the first week of uh, uh, spring break. It's the five days of spring break. Yeah. So you uh, wait and up all the way to whatever age, um, senior, uh, boys and girls, boys and girls. Um, we, we accept, I accept this one player if they come uh, we have packages for two or three players we have I have packages for four to six players and then I have packages for uh, more than that you know um, uh, they can reach me on social media so Facebook Instagram Twitter uh, Sandro Grande um, Academy if you do a search you'll, you'll find me um, you know my email is Sandro G dot academy at gmail.com so that's all the information with regards to next week unfortunately unfortunately i'm gonna have to let everybody know that it's canceled because oh. of the government restrictions okay. and i'll tell you what um it was all reserved in 24 hours it was all reserved yeah, in 24 I hours i was booked uh people people were just texting me calling me uh, emailing me and all this Um, I'm actually going to send an email to all the people that signed up now. Uh, they will be the first people that I contact when I can start. Uh, we were all under the impression, myself and, and other, uh, other coaches, that we were going to be able to do you know, one player or two players. I wasn't accepting more than two players anyways yeah. uh, for, for next week because of the restrictions. But now with the new, um, the new press conference that, uh, that came out with new, new laws, um, We can't, we can't even do that right now, you know, so I need to wait. 
Um, you know, unfortunately, I can't start. But uh, like I said, I mean, once I start, everybody's going to know social media through email, through social media, through through wherever you are, whatever platform, yep. uh, people will find out. And Milan Weekly Podcast will be glad to post all your information for that and how they can contact you. And I apologize. That was not a setup question. I had absolutely no <laughs> idea that it was canceled. Because yeah, my no, next question, <laughs> my next question to you is, you'll have a little Gianfranco Polillo that's going to be attending too. So, uh, okay, <laughs> I was going to okay, bring no my problem. son. So it was yeah. not actually. I just, not I just found out half an hour ago. So it's not. Okay. It's something yeah. right off the. You know, right off the. Hot off the hot press. Off, hot off the press. press. Exactly. So, perfect. We're going to get that out for you tonight as well. Uh, let's switch now. We're going to go to Seria, and I want to know, and I know I want to take up uh, Can too I much more of your time. No. Stay with the oh, Canada one. Okay. Switch jersey if you want. Go switch jersey. Switch jersey. I know you want to. Scott you Vendin. No, 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 no. I'm gonna surprise you even more now. Oh no, he's changing again. How many? Oh you know, look at that. Frozen. You know, yeah, this is this is uh this club man, this club did so much for me. It's it's uh I'm so happy to have had that opportunity to play with this club. And fantastic man you know, i'm getting text messages every day because we still talk we still have a chat yeah uh, there's we have two chats actually. Uh, one is frozenone legends so there's wow. like everybody from 1950 to 60 wow. crazy seven year old 75 year old and and then we have one just of our team from 2000 and uh, 2000 2001 amazing and, and that's where i get my idea of you know uh, we can't forget the impact no Soccer is a different beast. Soccer is a different beast. It's based on passion. It's based on attachment. And, you know, when this chat opened up, we were at 10 people. And now we're over like two, 200 players from 1950. To present. Today. To today. Uh, you know, and, you know, and doing... I say do, we've been doing Milan weekly podcast for a long time. We did a, a red card weekly, uh, which is was kind of a different setup where we didn't focus totally on uh, on Milan. And I've always throughout the years, you know, and especially when I speak to other people, not, not my close knit friends, we kind of understand each other when it comes to sports. But when I and I would always get questions about Milan, and you know, uh, uh, of course, for the last ten years, how badly they've been doing, and now this year, how how great they've been doing. I try to like explain to them like for me even living in Canada the pain that I've gone through since 2011 to today will not be repeated in any other sports team because I'm that passionate about Milan. I spend myself Vince who's the other co-host of Milan Weekly podcast, Marcello, Sunny, graphic designer uh, dude that is from Norway living in Australia helping us out. That's something, guys, that I don't know if that exists in, in North American sports. Not not as much. Not as much. Um, it's, it, it, you know, the Habs, perfect example. That exists. How long have they existed, though? Their yeah. colors, their colors never changed. No. Their name never changed. Uh, actually, no, they changed uh, back in the day. But, um, you know, Toronto Maple Leafs, you know, um, it's because our model of sports in, in North America is always, like, okay, I want that franchise. I'm going to go buy it as if it's a yeah. store, you know, and it's, yeah. it's a, there's no roots to, to that type of uh, business. You know? No, no, no. If we go to Serie A and quickly, uh, just some quick fire yeah. questions for you. What yeah. do you think about this open campionato that we haven't seen in the past 10 years? I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I, uh, I said in August that Juve was not going to win. And, uh, you know, yes, I did wear a Juve jersey before. That's just to bug you. But, you know, like a, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a soccer, soccer uh, lover and I'm objective. You know, I knew Juve was going to struggle. They're on their way down. Uh, you know, Ronaldo is, is still Ronaldo, but you can see that he's on his way down a little bit. Uh, um, you know, Inter made a big squad. Then you factor in before Christmas, Inter is out of Champions League or, or after Christmas, yeah. uh, they're eliminated. Uh, so now all of a sudden they can only concentrate on on, uh, on Serie A. 
where Milan is playing in Europa League with a very small squad and Juve is playing in Champions League where they're always looking to give their maximum and, and win Champions League. So at a certain point, they're going to lose points along the way. You know, and yeah. what can help Juve, unfortunately for all Juve fans, is that they lose next week against Porto again and they're eliminated from Champions League, and then the championship might get really hot after yeah. that, you know? Uh, but or else, if they stay in Champions League, if they, they go to the next round, it's just going to be tough for, you know, you see it. Uh, Ronaldo has never missed games in the past, and this year, you know, they sat him out a couple of times to rest him, and it just, yeah. it, you know, Messi, same thing. Uh, you can't keep on going, but this league is fantastic this year. Milan is playing great football with a young squad. They're building a foundation that's going to be fantastic. Um, before you go team. on to the other, before you go to the other teams, another quick fire question: What's the team that's disappointed you the most this year? Um, I want to say Roma. Okay, I want to say Roma. Um, I thought they were in the right direction. I thought they were going to, you know, be able to take that next step. Um, when I said Juve wasn't going to win in August, I was thinking Roma Inter, you know, and then, you know, it just doesn't work out. And, and there's always issues behind the scenes from what we hear, because I'm not in the dressing room. Yeah, exactly. You know, so there, there's always uh, what they call in Italian polemica. There's always politics, polemica. politics. And, yeah. and it's like... Just leave them alone. Let them work. I think uh, Fonseca, about a month ago in an interview, said, uh, you know, oh, uh, are you uh, are you nervous because everybody's saying that you might be fired? And he goes, every week I'm getting questions. So why would I be nervous this week more than last week? No mm -hmm. sense. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a challenge. And, and another one for you, uh, Sandro, which team has impressed you the most this year? Um, Milan, because of their squad. I don't think they have a great squad. I think they have a decent squad, a squad that can finish on a, on a regular year, a squad that can finish fifth or sixth. I'm happy. You see, and here's the, the ironic thing on all this. Milan is, is struggling with, with finan uh, fi financially like in the last couple of years. So what do they do when they have Pioli? Instead of just firing him, they stick with him. They wanted to fire him last year because he was losing some games at the beginning. They stick with him. Things start changing. He starts winning games. He built something that's stable. Now they're stable, you know. Like, and in Italy, it's way too much. Uh, uh, you know, always with the, it's a uh, it's a revolving door of coaches in Italy. Sometimes yeah. you know, like Palermo, yeah. Genoa. Those teams are traditionally known for that revolving door. They'll take back a coach that they fired two uh, in like. Two years ago, and he's still under contract, right? So a special mention uh, from that question is definitely Atalanta because they're unbelievable. I just can't believe what they're doing. Like that's that's that that drives it doesn't drive it drives me crazy because I want to develop soccer players. Well, these guys are doing exactly that. Like Ajax, we can put Atalanta in that in that group of Ajax and Benfica and all these, yeah. you know. Yeah, them uh, they're they're you know, and I am a fan of Atalanta, the the soccer club and the way they develop. Am I a fan of Atalanta, the team itself? Uh, Gasperini rubs me the wrong way. Everybody knows that uh, that uh, that uh, that is something that uh, I have over here. But as <laughs> Atalanta, the club and the way they develop, purchase and sell is something that everybody should model model for. Yeah. yeah. Um, Sandro, the other one, obviously, is Sassuolo. Just to yeah. name a smaller smaller place, but doing fantastic. Yeah, uh, the other question for you, uh, two more. One, okay. the player in Serie A that has impressed you the most this year, where you know you said at the starting of the starting of the campaign, didn't even wasn't on your radar, but now that you watch Serie A, you say, ah, I need Young to, kid? I need to know more. Young or old? Like for me okay. to be very honest, you. Uh, the person who's impressed me the most, and I did not think he would be able to succeed like this, was A, it's uh, Fre Federico Chiesa, because he came from Fiorentina to Juventus, and being Juventus was very focused on, uh, on CR7. I was not happy for that move. I, was, I really wanted him to come. I think Milan needed, needed him more than Juve did. 
but I was afraid that he was going to do that that Bernardeschi move, where he would move from Fiorentina to Juventus, which is a hatred that cannot that cannot be duplicated in, in Serie A besides uh, Roma Lazio and, and the other teams. But Fiorentina and Juve have always had this hatred when exchanging players, and Bernardeschi fizzled out. I was afraid for Chiesa that he was f- going to fizzle out, but it seems like Chiesa is as important, if not more important, than CR7 right now at Juventus. So that's the thing that, that he's the player that Im- impressed me the most. Yeah, for me, look, I, I would go in age age brackets. So the oldest age bracket is obviously Zlatan. I mean, there's yeah. there's nobody else. I mean, that's unbelievable. What he does, like Ronaldo, we're used to, uh, but he's never been, you know, really injured or, or whatever. And, and, you know, we're used to him, you know, but Zlatan coming back from the MLS, everybody questioning him and bringing all these young kids on Milan, putting them on his back and just like, follow me, we're going this direction, let's go. You know, so Zlatan for sure in that age bracket, in the middle age bracket, Lukaku and Ilicic. Lukaku, because honestly, he's surprising me. I I never liked him before, but he's really doing well. Not that I didn't like him, you know, obviously I appreciated him, but he was never my favorite, but he's doing really well there. Ilicic is just phenomenal. He's just phenomenal. This guy is like, wow, like what what a player this is. This is like, uh, you know, I don't want to say world class, but oh my gosh, the stuff he does on the field is, is just fantastic. And <sighs> you see, elegant. you see here, before you go on, you just you did something for me right now. You held back on the famous world class. Let's tell everybody, Sandra, and I'm I'm one, it takes me a lot. You for me to say that you're world class, for me, it takes a lot. And I see now with social media, the world class thing is going is going around a little bit too often, right? You know, like yeah, like you said, you stopped yourself there. You could have a world class performance in a game, but yeah. it's a different saying. You are world class, meaning that you are forever world class. So, yes, Sandro did it. Like no, I mean, you, you you can't say you can't say he's forever world class. I mean, only in the last few years he's been doing what he's doing. He he did well before, but. That meets his elegance. He's so elegant. He's so the way he touches the ball, the way he plays. He plays like he's on, on silk, you know. And and uh, um, no, he's not. He's not world class. When we talk about world class, we're talking about the the Del Piero's and the the, the Zlatans and the Thierry Henry's and these yeah, are even are for class. me. I have, have a debate with you. You know, we're gonna get to the. We're gonna <laughs> remember the last time we talked. We said that yeah. once the pandemic is over, we'll get to for a coffee and we we'll talk soccer. Imagine okay. I, I invited you back on the show because we still can't get together, and yeah. I will remember this. This debate will debate if Del Piero is world class or not. Okay, no problem. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then the young guys. I mean, for me, there's one, and I'm really happy. He's Italian, Nicola Barella, yeah. is wow, wow. He I think he's played almost every game. I don't know the stats. He's played almost every game. He runs up and down the field. He has tons of quality. He can score. He can assist. He he in the midfield hardly loses any balls. If there's one negative, I would tell him, please stop diving. Yeah. It's just it's exaggerated sometimes. But or else everything else is he's he's really surprising me. And I'm happy that Italy has him because this summer at the Euro, they're gonna need him. Yeah, we're gonna need him. And you know, it also helps when we get uh, World-class performance, I'm going to say it, from uh, Verratti in the PSG game at the Bernabeu. Oh, he uh, was. Sorry, wow. uh, yeah, at the Bernabeu. He was, wow. And you know what You know what bugs me, Steve? Is that, uh, sorry, Camp Nou, Camp Nou. He was in at Barcelona, the camp, at the Camp Nou. At the Camp Nou. Um, Amazing. Is that, why does Verratti have to go to Paris Saint-Germain? Yeah. Juve was supposed to get him. Milan could have gotten him. Inter yeah. could have gotten him. All the clubs were there. Why do? Why does he have to go? To, and I'm happy for him, and he's becoming one of the legends at, at the yeah. Paris Saint Germain because I think he, yeah. he's won the most trophies. Uh, I don't know. He got a, he got a. Yeah, he's with uh, Marquinhos there from Roma, and you know, it's. I'm gonna plug another. I'll give a, another minute here, but I'm gonna plug another uh, podcast, but much, uh, much bigger than ours. You know, I watch Bobo TV on on Twitch. And, you know, they were talking about it and they were saying, you know, it's not only with money 
that PSG. They've also made great moves. And, you know, uh, Bobo TV is uh, Christian Verdi and uh, Antonio Cassano and another two gentlemen. I forgot. I think one of them is Ventola. The other one is Adan. And they go through and they talk soccer and they have a guest. Of course, obviously, you know, uh, they, the, the knowledge is there. And, you know, they were talking about it just yesterday, saying, you know, PSG, they signed Verratti. They went to Roma and they went and get Marquinhos. They were not scared to bring Thiago Silva. So it's uh, PSG, we also refer to them as cash, but they also made some great moves too. And that, like you said, is very uh, is very important when uh, when you're running a team, right? So, uh, Look, Manchester City, everybody talks about cash, but the reality is that uh, Kevin De Bruyne, nobody wanted him. He left England to go to Germany. He yeah. went from one, one German club, not the, not the biggest German clubs, but he went from no. one German club to another German club, and he didn't go to Bayern Munich or Borussia Dortmund. You know, like, so he, he's in Germany with two small clubs, and, and then they take him more. You know, like, I mean, you, 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 can, you can discuss this as much as you want, but the reality yeah. is that those clubs should be uh, congratulated for the work that they do. Congratulated for the work they do. Sandro, I know that you're a very busy man. I want you to thank you again for giving me this hour, and I'm pretty sure we could go another hour. I want to apologize for the frame behind me because that my wife picked it out, okay? And she kicked me out of our downstairs studio. So I have to do this with the Golden Girls frame behind me. So that's my apology to you. So that means I owe you a coffee, and we will talk about Del Piero being world-class, hopefully very, very soon. I want to congratulate you on your switch. I want to wish you the best of luck in the switch to Manic Football and Sandro Grande Academy. And I'll give you now the floor so you can tell people how they can reach you on social media. Look, uh, I'm on Facebook. Sandro Grande is my page. It's my personal page, but I'm keeping that one. I think I want to be a little bit more personal towards the people. Um, Instagram, it's uh, Grande uh, underscore Sandro. Um, it's underneath. It's in the, uh, yeah. in the little writing there. And then uh, we got Twitter as well. Uh, I'm on Twitter as well. So I think it's Grande underscore Sandro7 on Twitter. And um, shoot me an email. You know, um, I'm willing to talk to many, many people, even if it's just, you know, to get a, um, a little bit of information on, on myself or you need, you have questions about your kids or whatever. Um, I will be launching all the activities that we, that I will be doing with Sandro Grande Academy because there's other stuff, not only private training. And uh, a small training. So stay tuned on social media for uh, those announcements. Perfect. Guys, I want to thank everybody who listens to Milan Weekly Podcast live or in the comfort of your own home. They've said that I look, I look even bigger on big screen TV. So that's I would love to see that. And once, uh, once El Presidente works his magic and he turns this into a podcast while you're running in your car or doing whatever activity you love, Guys, enjoy your family. Thank you very much. And Forza Milan and Forza Sandro Grande.